Hey guys, this is Dominique Wilkins. And this is Sean Kepp. This is Gary Payton. Hey, this is Paul Gasol. NBA fans, what's up? This is Vince Carter here. Hey, what's up? This is Matt Barnes. If you're an old school NBA fan like I am, make sure you check out the basketball time machine with my man Sean Davis. Hello and good day to you folks, how's it going? My name is Sean David and I welcome you back to the Basketball Time Machine, your, I hope so at least, your favorite old school NBA show. In today's episode, I want to take a look at the rivalry between Michael Jordan and the glove, Gary Payton. Now obviously we know that Gary Payton was one of the greatest defenders of all time, but there was a time when he got kind of cooked by Michael Jordan, but then again it also changed. But long story, let's take a look, but before we start, Small favor, please subscribe to the channel and like the video if you enjoy the content. And I would say, let's get right into it. Now, I'm pretty sure most of you guys have seen the Last Dance documentary, and there was that part where Michael Jordan took a look at some comments that Gary Payton made, and his reaction was, oh. Anyway, let's take a look at the clip. Been banging it. it took a toll on Mike. It took a toll, and then <laughs> so resting him a little bit, and then the, the, the series changed. And I wish I could have did it earlier. I don't know if the outcome would have been different, but... It, it, it was a difference <laughs> and, and beat me down a little bit. The glove. I had no problem with the glove. I had no problem with Gary Payton. Now, the interesting part was that Gary Payton was not only considered to be one of the greatest defenders of all time, but in that period, he probably was the greatest defender, even as a point guard. And of course, I can understand, especially when you took a look at the 1996 NBA Finals, that Gary Payton felt that he made life miserable for Michael Jordan. But on the other hand, you have Michael Jordan, this competitive person who would never give credit to anybody. But I thought, okay, let's take a look and go way back to see how... Michael Jordan and Gary Payton started off. Let's take a look. Now, the two of you had been going at it for a while. Um, I guess at one point he said, don't, don't ever talk shit to black Jesus. Yeah. And, and, said, and, and, and that I don't care about black Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care about none of that. We always start this off. Um, it's a good, this is a good one for him. I want to hear this. Yeah, we always start this off by asking, who was the first person when you got to the league to bust your ass? Yeah, I know that mother. DMJ. And I, I, I didn't know it was him. <laughs> Straight bud. I want to hear the story. Bullshit. Yeah, I was talking shit to him in um, preseason. You know, I didn't know that they don't play in preseason. Right. They just cruised through it. And then when the season got there, he took it personal because I had like 20 on him in, in preseason. He didn't play. I was talking a real lot of smack. So I'm killing him. Had about 21. He played about seven, eight minutes. Then all of a sudden, we got to play him in the first game of the regular season. <laughs> the backcourt for rookie, Gary Payton. Watch out, the number two draft choice in the NBA this year. Look for him to be rookie of the year. He come to Seattle. First thing he get on the floor, he was like, Pip, Armstrong, the young young fella, my, he mine. Payton with the basketball, nothing doing out there. And a long there pass going by Michael. And here we go. Whoa! Out on the right wing, Peyton trying to go on Paxson. He lost the ball, and here comes Michael again with Horace on the wing. All the way to the glass goes Michael Jordan. And he's like, this ain't preseason. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> man, he remembered it, man. It did all of a sudden. Jordan posting up, jump shot over Peyton. Oh, yeah. The reload goes <laughs> and a foul on the rookie. Peyton tried to pull his hand out of the cookie jar. He gets his second foul. Michael went down in the lane. Still on the dribble. Now inside Cartwright, Jordan! Oh, yes! Oh, Bill, I loved it again. Cartwright with the pass down to Michael, breaking slam ball. Played about eight minutes. <laughs> He's had no points. Two, about two assists or whatever. Oh. Found him, and that's four on Gary Payton. They didn't like, crowd didn't like that. Not much question about that one, right? Now, after researching for quite some time, I came across a clip that was pretty interesting. You had some NBA legends and some analysts taking a look at some Michael Jordan, Gary Payton footage of the 1996 finals. And I would say it's pretty interesting to see what they had to say about Michael Jordan and the glove. Let's take a look. Uh-huh. GP. 
Bay Area, you know he ain't going for that. You can't stop the rain. I think that's why I love Gary Pink because every cutaway shot to him, you have that that face on. And I just, I don't know why I loved it so much. What happened there? What did Michael do? Oh, he and Peyton. He and the glove got into it. She keep picking them up. They trapping him, getting the ball out of his hands. Got the perfect game plan. You can actually see frustration, which you, again, never see. I know I changed my plane reservations after game three. I was certain that series was over, and I'm pretty sure the Bulls felt the same way. They, they they changed their reservations up here. Did Gary Payton have the ability to get under Michael's skin? Is that what happened or was it just an off game? Because according to Jordan, it had nothing to do with Gary Payton. <laughs> so you got MJ going for offensive rebounds right now. It's so frustrating. Dang, six for 19? I ain't never seen Jordan shoot that bad. I feel like Jordan made everything. <laughs> Do you know how happy I'd be if I went six for 19 in a rec league game? Honestly, I would throw myself a parade. MJ don't want to give GP his flowers, but he was locking them up. Look up, he frustrated right now. I can see it in MJ eyes right now, he frustrated. Come on, man, you gotta give give GP his due, man. He, he was like, he was, he was the one guy that just wasn't scared. He was up to take the challenge. And, and that's half the battle when you got such a great player like Jordan who can score 40, 50, 60 on any given night. You got to want to be able to say, hey, if he going to do it, I'm going to make it work. And that's who Gary was. He didn't care if he scored 30, but he was going to make it work. And he wasn't ashamed of it either. He didn't care. Six for 19. It's like, oh, man, remember that day I locked down Michael Jordan? Oh, how many did he score? 23 points. Like, really? It's 23 points, and you locked him down. Like, all right. But I don't know, when I watch these clips back, I think GP might have had them. If there are people that I put on MJ for certain possessions and I had to name names, Gary would definitely come to mind. But when you're dealing with MJ, a guy that basically scored at will, if he's making his shots, it doesn't matter who's guarding him. Gary Payton could guard you. Gary Payton could frustrate you. I mean, you don't get called the glove. That's a great nickname. I don't even know when the last, when is the last time anybody had a great nickname in the NBA? The glove is the great nickname. People don't give Gary Payton enough credit. And then they want to get on me when I had them top five as my all-time point guards. No, like, he was the glove. Like, GP was a problem. In my opinion, Gary was the best defensive point guard all time, period. Like, just his tenacity, his will to want to play defense. That was just like, you got to have that that drive to want to play defense. And that was his whole game, wanting to try to lock you down. He can guard you on the ball. He can guard you off the ball. He'll guard you facing the basket. He'll fight you while you're trying to post them up. He'll get back in transition, and then he'll talk a lot of trash as well. You know, trash talk's an interesting thing. I grew up with that, but you did. And it was an art form, and guys like Bird and Michael just elevated it. And Gary Payton was in that class, man. Gary, I can't remember specifically in a playoff series, not the final. I remember just laughing. Gary said something funny to an opponent. Maybe it was against Utah. And I just laughed out loud. And, you know, back then, media seats are right there on the front. And Gary just looked at me and he goes, Will, I'm pretty good. And then <laughs> I just... He's a volume shooter when it comes to trash talk. See, Michael Jordan will beat you and then have one really, really precise, stinging, insightful insult for you. But Gary Payne's just going to just keep shooting. Rhythm shoot. All oh, He's just going to keep talking trash. You score on him, he's going to talk trash that he didn't score three points on him. So I think this from the sheer volume, the sheer just like, just he is a tsunami of trash talk, whereas Michael Jordan is just more a super soaker right to your eyeball. I know that most of you guys know that I'm a huge Michael Jordan fan. To me, he's the greatest player of all time, and it's, it's not even a question. But I gotta be honest, when I saw the clip of Michael Jordan laughing at Gary Payton at the Last Dance documentary, it kind of rocked me the wrong way, and I'll tell you why. Now, obviously, I also like Gary Payton a lot, and I think he was a sensational basketball player. Not only a great defender, but a great basketball player. Of course, he also had weaknesses in his game. He was not the greatest shooter and so on. But as a basketball player, and overall, I think he was great. 
Now, looking back at the 1996 finals, I think he really deserves some credit because, I mean, I got eyes, I got basketball knowledge and so on. And I know most of you guys, too. So there's no way on earth that Gary Payton did not make life tough for Michael Jordan. I could see it. He was guarding him like crazy. He made it tough for Jordan to even get the ball. When Jordan was in the post, he really had to move his body, work with all of his power. And it's... I think it's just nice if you give credit to people who deserve some credit. So MJ, me being a huge fan of yours, come on man, be a bigger man, give credit to people who deserve some credit. That's just my opinion. Anyway, you guys, that was it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed this video. You can also post in the comments below. Let me know how you think about the whole situation with Gary Payton and Michael Jordan. I'm pretty interested to see what you guys think. And yeah, I would say I hopefully see you next time on the Basketball Time Machine.